the RNA virus has changed the entire DNA of mankind. I still remember in the last two years, the number of patients coming and asking me, how are you, has increased. I still remember one day in the hospital, I was going up the staircase, a couple came running, sir, 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 how are you? I was taken aback. It is true that healing is always a two-way process. When the teacher smiles at you, you get healed. And when you smile at the teacher, teacher gets healed. And that's true for patient and doctors. So my dear friends, when I say I would like to help you and understand this strange phenomenon which happened in the last three years. Yes, I started by saying that people have come closer. A lot of people have helped, a lot of people across the world. We saw it all in the news. My colleague just shared the same. But it's not only empathy, it's apathy and antipathy also, where I was pulled and dragged into. And what is apathy? When there is a lot of fear, the mind gets numbed. The mind stops. The fear is not processed. And that numbness stops you from going to your next door neighbor to give condolences to somebody who passed away. And why does that happen? I'll come to that in a minute. Apathy is a consequence of a severe disaster and that is very normal. And what do we do? What we do is help them sit down and let them spill their emotions on the table. When the fear starts spilling, the mind starts healing, you become mindful, you achieve some amount of equanimity, and you learn the human mantra of sharing and feeling with others. What is antipathy? Antipathy is, I still remember this story, this brother, 40-year-old brother, was abusing his sister who was admitted in the Jumbo Center for COVID, and he said, you sister, you went to work and brought COVID. That is why my, our parents passed away. And the sister told me, I don't want to go out and go back from here. I want to die. And when I sat down with both the sister and the brother, the brother was very angry that the sister went to work. The sister felt very guilty that she brought COVID. But we found that the common enemy was not the sister, but the virus. And slowly as they shared, as the girl shared, the, shared her guilt, the boy shared his anger, fear and sadness, they hugged each other. My job across the last two years, two and a half years was, I never stayed at home. I sat in my clinic. I said, I will not stay at home. My mask was the second vaccine. And I was vaccinated. And every time what used to happen is very interesting. Every week I would get two, three phone calls. Doctor, you know, actually we came to visit you two days ago, but we have been found to be positive. And then I would tremble inside, I would be so scared, I would be so scared, but there's still existential meaning in life is more important than everything. I cannot leave my bunker. I cannot leave my borders. I have to be there and see to it that I see my patients. And that is what I did across three years. Never did I ever sat at home. Never, not a single day. But I had my own, own troubles. So apathy, empathy, and antipathy, all three were seen in this entire, in this entire, entire disaster. Well, <laughs> what we learned across the last two and a half years is unlocking the mind is more important than keeping your minds locked. When your teacher is upset and angry at you, it's a good idea not to talk about her in the canteen, but you can still talk. But tell her, I need five minutes of your time, ma'am. When are you free? And going back to her, looking into her eyes and saying, ma'am, I was so upset when you said this in front of everybody. And then what happens is you slowly become a bloomer. You don't, you don't turn around and become a blamer. What happens is we start resolving our issues right at the inception, right at the bud, and see to it that it does not grow into a tree. That also adds value and also causes some amount of, of skill inside you. Now, when I say this, most of us have been trained 
in our homes. Don't share your feelings. Most of us have seen our parents not sharing our feelings at all. And when they don't share their feelings, remember one thing, the mind and the body talks to each other. And when the mind and the body talks to each other, when the mind is unhealthy, the body crumbles. When the body is unhealthy, the mind crumbles. So it's so important, my dear friends, that we taught people to unlock their minds and put their stories and the feelings on the table. Well, mind is not made of iron or steel. It's made of neurons. And we need to nourish our neurons. And the brain has not changed its size, shape, color, texture, volume. But still, mental problems have increased. Friends, with a very sad heart, I would like to share that 10% increase in suicides happened in India between 2019 and 2020. I'm not saying this. The National Crime Research Bureau report, which is there on the net, 10% increase only has happened because of one reason, COVID, loss of jobs, poverty, and other, other areas. So this is something we need to really understand. And my dear friends, keep unlock your minds off and on to keep it very, very healthy. Anger is an artifact of a fast-paced world. And when you do not process your anger, you jump to hate much faster. Ideally, what happens when you're angry? When you acknowledge your feeling, when you accept your feeling, when you identify your feeling, when you experience your feeling, you calm down after some time. It gets exhausted. But when anger is not processed, it gets converted into resentment. And when resentment is not processed, it gets converted into hostility. And hostility, when it's not processed, it gets converted into hate. And you see hate all over the world. I don't have to give you examples. And my dear friends, intense hate anywhere interferes with love everywhere, which means if a mother hates her father, she cannot love the child. If the child hates people in the school, he cannot concentrate in the class. If a man hates his boss intensely, he cannot concentrate in his work. Intense hate anywhere interferes with love everywhere. My dear friends, hate is very infectious. Extremely infectious and addictive too. And so, we as a group of professionals, we decided that we will not break our friendships because we differ on many issues, including social and political, but we will always sit down and discuss with respect and dignity. And in COVID, we, we saw COVID terrorists making money out of masks, making money out of uh, oxygen, many, making money out of medicines. And still, a lot of people fought, and a lot of friends and brethren, doctors, spent days and nights inside the hospital saving lives. And that, I think, is, is one of the most important learnings for me. My dear friends, when you face a disaster, three things can happen. You can collapse, you can evolve, and you can find different ways of, for me, meaning in life was one of the most important coping, which means I went to hospitals to talk to doctors, nurses, ayabais, puns, offline. And I still remember one important interaction with the Ayabais. I asked the Ayabais, you still are working in these wards? You could be infected. How, how come are you here? Half of them said, we have no choice. We are poor. We want to work. We have to earn a living and run the kitchen. But the other half said, we find meaning in life. We find we are doing something good for the entire society. And that is something which really touched me across time. My dear friends, Hate is not only in infectious, but also addictive. Now, around this time, what happened was, me and Dr. Shashank Joshi said we have to find meaning in life. So we started a conversation every week, week after week on COVID. We got people like Sunil Gavaskar, Harsha Bhogle, Smriti Rani, and others. And that helped me to face the entire crisis. Every day at night till 12 o'clock, we would sit down on the phone and find beds for patients, find oxygen, find medications, and sleep late. But the point is, I was not tired and bored. I was exhausted and contented. And that was the big difference. As you look at this, sadness is a very important emotion. People say we, have, we go to happiness workshops, 
and we are happy all the time. But sadness is a very important emotion. Sadness is a positive emotion. Depression is a negative state. So once you're sad, if you are with the sadness completely and if you feel it completely, what happens, what happens basically, empathy also grows as a plant. Empathy can evolve because of experiences. Empathy can evolve because of of methods which you use to regulate your emotions, empathy can also evolve through experiences of life. But sadness is one of the most important needles for empathy. My dear friends, I would like to share something very important. As we were finding beds, finding oxygen, finding medicines, working in the hospitals, meeting people who have lost their lives, I also lost two members in my family. And that was an earth-shattering experience for me. I lost my aunt, whom I admitted, in my own hospital. And on the sixth day, she just collapsed. She just died. And uh, I had to go and claim her body. And I still remember, as the nurse pulled the entire box and took my signature, I took charge of her body along with my nephew. Everybody else was positive. So we had to cremate her alone. And I still remember the entire tears flowing through my eyes. The young nephew was consoling me, and I was consoling him. That was one of the most earth-shattering events in my life. But what, what did I learn from that? I learned the methodology of grief, which I was teaching everybody for the last 35, 40 years. I learned that there's no shame in tears. I learned that, I learned that it's not my fault. But still, as a doctor, there's an ounce of guilt which always remains. Could I have done something more? And after 40 days, I lost my first cousin. And I was supervising his treatment all the time. And, and, and that is what I have been training people now. I run a support group for those who have lost people in the COVID. It's running for a long time now. And I see one of the most important obstacles in my country is people do not want to cry. They feel ashamed of tears. And that is reinforced in the family. I still remember this mother saying who lost her husband. And she said, when I start crying, my four-year-old stops me and says, I will tell my uncle. Because the family has said, if you cry, we feel very bad. And you, you, you have a right to help us in taking care of our own mental. Please don't cry. My dear friends, we don't laugh at people who laugh. We should, not, we should not stop tears at all. And this is one of the most important interventions we do in our bi-weekly support group online as of now, that help people to cry. And Hindi they, Hindi they say, jo beh gaya wo pani hai, jo reh gaya wo zahir hai. And as I said, one myth which broke for me, which actually broke for me was, when I was consoling my nephew and he was, he was consoling me, I found that this entire business of the head of the family being very stoic, not weeping at all, helping everybody, is a myth. An eight-year-old can console an eight-year-old. A 20-year-old can console a 60-year-old. A 60-year-old can console a 40-year-old. No building stands on one pillar. Building stands on a million pillars. And that, I think, is one of the most important learnings which we are sharing across time. Time is not always the best healer. I still remember 1993, September 30, the earthquake at, at Latur in Maharashtra. I worked there for one year. And as we finished the year, the IAS officer, the chief secretary, who supervised the entire relief and rehabilitation, was addressing us. And he said, Dr. Shetty, we have built all the homes. People have gone back to their homes, which was not true. And he said, the mind will heal on its own. And I was a younger psychiatrist, a little angry. I said, sir, if the fan falls on your head and you start bleeding, do you think you'll just say the blood will stop on its own? You will always seek intervention. So my dear friends, remember, Mind is like a fuse, it can go off without reason. One out of seven Indians today are mentally ill. I'm not saying it. The Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, December 2018. So, time is not always the best healer. There's a difference between fracture of the mind and sprain of the mind. Sprain of the mind is when you do badly in a test, 
Mrs. Malik comes to you and says, come up, buck up again. Your, your principal says you can do better. You're OK. When you have a breakup and you feel very sad, your friends keep a party. They cheer you up and they introduce you to somebody else. That is a sprain of the mind. And a fracture of the mind is you, so, you feel so low that Singapore International and the small alley across looks the same. Singapore International and a slum looks the same. You are not able to enjoy what you were enjoying yesterday. Mind is like a stone. You don't feel good at all. You feel tomorrow should be holiday and they should not call me. It continues for a long time. You feel hopeless, you feel worthless. You feel very, very tired and down that you don't feel like getting up from the bed. You feel so irritable, so irritable, you feel like breaking something or breaking yourself. And that is fracture of the mind. And for that, remember, time is not always the best healer. You need to really take help. My dear friends, as I stop slowly, I would like to share the names of two world's greatest mental health professionals so far. One is Patanjali, who gave us yoga. And the other is Gautam Buddha, who gave us Vipassana. And both have been studied across the world. And Vipassana is, 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 being, is, being, is being also spoken as mindfulness. But remember, these two great discoveries came from India. And my dear friends, as I end, I pay my obeisance to these two great saints who are not saints, but were scientists. And they gave us the gift of yoga and vipassana. And as I end, I would like to say, and I would like to say this is what I learned, that keep doing your task continuously. Keep doing it as well as you can. Do not bother about your O plus, A plus, or B, but try and do your best. Try and be as sincere as you can for the task in hand. With this, I would say, lastly, that the small RNA virus has changed the DNA of mankind. And for me, I learned three things. Unlock my mind and share my feelings. Stretch your hand and see that you help somebody. Be connected with the world and not be isolated and be alone. And lastly, very important is focus on my mind and my mental health so that I'll be useful for myself and for the world in general. Thank you.